Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, I'm going to do a demo. I'm redoing the demo I did the other day because I had some technical problems with Sketchbook Pro. The, one of the problems I was having is I couldn't get the value to go above like a 60-70% level. And then once I restarted the program, it was working just fine. I, there are some bugs in Sketchbook Pro because I've also had that same issue happen with the pencil not working or the eraser not working properly. And when I restarted, it works just fine. So another reason why we want to save while we're working. I like to draw in blue quite a bit. I don't like to draw in black. So what I wanted to show you guys really quick is how do you get your image to become black? So I'm going to show you that really fast here. So I have a folder over here, okay, that I drew at home. Here's my image. What you want to do, the easiest way to do this is grab your image, drag it and open it in Photoshop right here. Okay, Photoshop's going to open it up even if you don't know Photoshop. I really love the blue. I draw on it all the time, probably because I came from animation, and for 50, over 15 years in animation, I drew with a blue pencil all the time. Okay, even so, even when I draw digitally out of habit, I still go to blue. It's just the way that I like to work. I want to change this. This is how easy it is. I open it up in Photoshop. I'm going to come over here. Okay, I'm going to go under Image. I'm going to go to Mode, and then I'm just going to go to Grayscale. And I'm going to hit Discard. Voila! It's in black that easy. Now I'm just going to save it. File, save as, save it back in my folder. Okay. And when it's saved, I now have this black line right here. Then I'm going to take that black line. I'm going to go over and I'm just going to drop it and open it inside Sketchbook Pro. And there it is. There's my drawing that was blue transferred into black. The reason why we want to do this is because uh, when we're working in tone, we already have a base value already set up here for us in tone. You see this right here? We have white to black saves us a ton of work time right there. It's already there for us, okay? Um, I was sort of confusing my students in the last demo. I told them a lot of times I like to work in what are called warm marker grades. So a warm marker grade is when I come over here, and if you see that, that's sort of a warm marker grade where I'm, I'm not quite at black, but I'm just about, I don't know what you would call this little mark here, a couple, um, what's half of a quarter? of an inch. <laughs> I don't five eighths whatever. I'm just a little bit over right here. And if you see if I go up here and look at this and if I come over next to my ship right here, okay, um, if you want to do war markers, this is how you get the sort of war marker feel. Okay. So look at that. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is my computer wigging out again. I am painting on a layer and it is doing something weird right there. Do you see that? It has now been caught on video how Sketchbook Pro is acting up. So I don't know why that's doing that right there. So let me come back in here and erase this. I'm going to have to check to make sure I'm on another layer underneath and I'm having that issue. That's probably why I was having an issue the other day. So um, I'm going to pause the video for one second and I'm going to double check something. Hold on. All right. So I, I just noticed what I did it was my mistake. Um, haven't had all my coffee yet this morning. So what we want to do is after you pull this line drawing in, we want to adjust the multiply mode for your drawing. So I'm going to come over here. This is, look, you have two icons. This icon gives you other options for the layer. The icon on here on the right adjusts. I want to come over here right now, and I want to make sure I put this onto multiply. Oh, I don't know why that did that. Let's do it again. On a multiply blend mode like that. By doing that, it shows the marker that is underneath on the separate layer underneath here. So watch, okay? Let me delete what's there. If I come back over here right now with my marker, and if I start like comping out my vehicle, look at what happens. I'm drawing underneath it with markers right now. Do you see that? Pretty cool. Okay, it's under the line. I'm on another layer. What you do not want to do, let me go back a couple steps, is this. You don't want to work on, hold on. I went back too far and now it's acting up. Come on, Windows, don't crash. Not that hard of a task. What you don't want to do is come back to your line layer right here and be working and toning this. Uh-uh. That's a big no-no. Why? You're on your line. The more tone that you place in, and now you don't have to fully render your vehicle, but we just want to put some base tone to help turn the shapes. We'll talk about that in just a second here. But in order to get this set up, I wanted to show you first how to turn the image to black by bringing it in Photoshop. Bring it then back here in the Sketchbook Pro. Add it, another layer underneath it. Put this layer up on the top. And then this is also what I would recommend for you to do. Come over here. 
press the menu, and let's label this line. I'm going to go to that big A right there, and I'm going to come over here, turn off that, hit clear, and I'm going to write on here line. That way I know where my line drawing is. And look, it shows up in my layer like that. Then I'm going to come back to this layer here. I'm going to hold this, go to the A. I'm going to change this, take off that mark, hit clear. And then I'm going to write on here, tone. That way I know that I'm working on the right layer when I'm addressing. And the reason why I want to do that is as I adjust my tone, I could start to lay thin down my line drawing and get, allow the tone to breathe through so the drawing won't be so dominant heavy, okay, uh, with too much black line on it, all right? So next thing I need to do, when I'm on my tone layer right here, you will notice if you click this little icon right here, and if you happen to be in normal mode when you're on your tone layer, and if I come over here and try to address some type of marker, I can't really see it because the image is on top of it. So what I have to do is come up to the line. I have to hold the little round circular icons over here to the far right and go and place it into multiply blend mode. Okay. Once I do that, look at what happens underneath on my tone layer. I can now see any type of marker indication that's, that I might be working on. Okay. I can start putting all kinds of little details in there. All right. So now we know how to load up our line drawing. We know how to make it transparent. Now we're going to go in and we're going to start talking about how to render it really quick. Okay, so give me one sec here. Let me pause. I want to bring up another file for you. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about really quick, I just wanted to bring this up. We're going to have a parallel light source inside our render here. We don't want to do a radial light source. I introduced lighting to you in the other lecture because I wanted to introduce you and tell you what it was and the differences. We don't need to do radial in here. So what we want to do is just come in here. Let's pick a base light source direction. I'm just going to say that light source is coming in at this direction. The only thing I have to decide if light's coming in at that direction um, to figure out my shadows, I'm just going to pretty much have to decide that if light's coming in there, I'm just going to come back here and pick a point at which I want the shadows to uh, to cast, okay? Because I don't know if my light coming in that direction is way back in the plane or what. So let's just stick real simple. Let's go back to the horizon line and pick a point that you want. And then you could come through, draw a line through your objects right here, okay? Then come back, make the parallel lines through them. So this way you can indicate how your shadows are casting and you can figure that out on your vehicle. So right here, I just sketched that. I can tell that a shadow is going to cast that way. I'm going to come over here just looking at my sphere. I know that I'm going to have a couple key points here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw like a rough line coming this way. Um, I had a student once ask me, how do I know exactly what a sphere is? If you wanted to do this, you could do this. You could come over, if you like, and you can draw a cube around part of your sphere. And then what you can do is you can map these little points that you know that are right here. And then I could come back here and I could draw some little lines that are going parallel. Okay. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw a line going that way. Okay. I'm going to draw a line going this way. Okay. And, and then I could come over here and I could figure out that if this line hit parallel through here, okay, and it comes down and hits down somewhere way back down in here. And I, if I had the other line coming through, I can get a good estimation of exactly where my shadow is going to be. Um, you know what? Okay, and basically if I have my sphere right here, what I can then decide is after, just like I figured out here with lines coming down in this direction, the light's coming in that direction, I can figure out how the shadows are going to cast. Okay, and um, what I shouldn't have done is I made a little mistake there I mentioned before, but I don't want to do that point line there because um, by doing that I'm actually introducing sort of a radial light source and that might confuse some of you. Just remember if my lines are coming down here, whatever direction you pick for your shadows to happen and take place, they're going to be casting and be parallel to each other. So um, if I have lines coming down this way, my shadows are parallel. Now it's up to you to pick what direction you want the shadows to cast. That's just going to indicate the direction the light's coming. Okay, so here I have this pretty much parallel. I can round off the top a little bit. I can draw a line from there, figure out exactly where it's going to hit. Boom, shadow's done. Same thing with this. I have my 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 sphere here. I could pretty much just sketch out a shadow and get a good estimation for how that's going to cast, especially coming at this, you know, pretty much this point of view in here. I'm going to have a shadow that's going to cast down and be pretty parallel. It's not going to be too much squash and stretch in there. Okay, all right. 
With that said and done, what's really important is I want to show you just two quick tools that you can use when you start working into your vehicle that are going to allow you to get some nice shadows. The airbrush is absolutely fantastic in this, this uh, Sketchbook Pro. Click this airbrush tool, come over here, and we can come in here like this. And I'm going to do this all sort of on the same layer. Now I want to show you real quick, there's two different airbrush tools. One, they're just two different settings, the same tool. One gives me a line that's like that. If I click on this other airbrush tool, okay, see the difference? This one's much more constant. The other one's much more fat and soft, okay? So those are presets in there. The soft, fat one is nice because now I could come in here like this and I could lightly create like a shadow or core shadow on my object, right? And then I could come over here and I could just sort of lighten this down, get a little bit lighter as I'm going across. I can increase the size to get like the whole object. And what I really like about this is it almost starts to give me the feel of, of like I'm shading with a pencil. Okay, so you see how I just got that in there really quick? Now, I have some choppy lines in there, right? If that's what you don't want to happen, you come over here, you have these really cool tools here that are a little different than Photoshop. Photoshop does have some smudge tools, okay? They have the smudge and the blur, but what I really like about the tools in here is you have a smear, you have a blur, and then a, a sharpen tool, okay? I really like the smear tool. I find it works really fantastic in here because what I can do is I can come in here and I could smear some of the values around. Now you'll notice, um, I'm going to back a, a couple steps. I'm working on my line. This is the benefit of not working on your line because then you can smudge the tone. So I'm not going to touch the line. I'm just going to smudge part of the tone that's in here. And what's really cool is you can see I can really get on here and start smudging some of this around and smearing it. Let's go over here. Let's click on the other tool right here. Okay. So remember, smear and then blur. Blur is going to allow me to do, you know, part of the same thing in here is I'm going to get in here and it's just going to blur the stuff together. Okay. So they're both really fun. I really like the blur too quite a bit. Look at that. See, I just blur that. It creates a nice little gradient there for me. Then I could come back in. I could switch up to my airbrush, thin it down. Then I could start coming in and I could start airbrushing part of the shadow that might be in here. My brush is really thin there. There, now I can get this a little bit thicker. And what's really nice is it sort of builds up. And I can just sort of build this light little grade, gradation coming across here. From dark, get a little bit lighter. And then if I get to a point where I want to come in and smudge it or smear it a little bit, I come over here. Oops. Come on. I grab that tool. Okay. Save. Make sure I have it here. Now I could come over here and I could start to smudge some of this and blur it together. Okay, so remember, if I get it looking to a certain point where I like right now, I want to come in and retract from that. All I have to do is I can go back to my soft eraser. And if I want to have a nice softer shadow, and if I put too much value, I could just come back in here and I could lightly erase some of this and I could bring it back down. You see that? Okay, huge incentive for me when I start going into tone, being able to jump back and forth. If you go too dark, don't panic. You can smear it, you can smudge it, then you can come back with the round eraser and we can erase a little bit off of there, okay? Um, so I have two options and if I want to put a highlight on an object, okay? I could come over here and I could retract with an eraser and I could come over here and do this and say I want to have a highlight right here. Let's say I want to have a little bit of a highlight right in here. I can erase, put a highlight right there. Let's say I want to put a highlight right here, erase it down to white. But then I want to come in and get that highlight to pop a little bit. I'm going to take my airbrush with a little bit of a darker value, and I'm going to come in and throw a little bit of a value sort of next to it to get it to pop out a little bit. Okay? So that's one option I could do that's real quick. I'm just going through this super fast, okay? I'm not doing high-end rendering here. But now the other option, too, is if I wanted to, if I have a dark surface, I can click airbrush, I can click white, and look. Boop. I can come back and airbrush white into my object. You see how I'm doing that? I could come back and literally airbrush white on. Since my paper is white, I can retract and work in the opposite way if I like to. Okay. Also, remember, I gave you guys that toned paper. Remember that? I'm not going to do that demo, but if you wanted to, you could upload the toned paper behind it, and then you could work just in values on top of it. That's your choice. Okay, all right, so let me continue with this. Let me do the sphere real quick. 
So again, this is how I block stuff in, then I'm going to go to the ship. I'm just doing this because I want you to get an idea of how these basic shapes work. I'm going to start with a 50. That's a block in right there for me, right? I like to work fast and sort of rough, so I don't care if I have overspray. I can come back later and clean it up. Now I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to start to darken this. This is a problem. Yesterday I couldn't get past this grade right here and it was driving me insane. Now I could go to black and I'd be like, whoop, look at that. Awesome. See, and I can put a real dark core shadow on there and then I can sort of work my way up here and be like, okay, I want to make this a little bit darker and get a light blend going in here, get my sphere happening. A little bit lighter in here. Come back maybe a little bit darker, blend some of this in here. All right, let's go down. Let's work on the shadow. I'm going to start here and just sort of rough it out real quick. I'm going to just do, do it all as one value because I really like working on the process of subtraction quite a bit. So once I get that done, I can come back here with my eraser and I could lightly come back and sort of go over this. See that? And I could automatically add some degradation into the, the shadow as it's casting. I can get that to thin down ever so slightly. If I have something that's too much, I can come back over here. I can take my smear option and I could smear some of this around a little bit. See that? Get a nice little soft transition. And then I could come back if I want to. I go back to my airbrush. Let's say I want to put like a little highlight right here in the middle that's real sharp. I'm on airbrush. Come up here, click white. Let's scale that down a little bit and I can just sort of do this. Start to airbrush that little highlight in there. Make, make it a little bit fuzzy around some of that. Okay. Look at that. It's starting to turn. It's a sphere. I'm going to come in here. I can take that sharp airbrush down there with white. I can put some reflective light on the back here if I like. And so on. Quick little basics that you guys should already know from basic drawing, but I just want to introduce you on how I like to shade working with the airbrush and then maybe going back to the marker using the smear tool, sort of going back and forth. Okay, now that that's done, and you know what, I do apologize, it is 10 times lighter up on the monitor than it is here. So when I render the demo for you, it'll be a lot darker. Okay, now that that's done, what I want to do, let's come back. Those were basic shapes, right? Let's take a quick look at my ship that I have here. All right, and I want you to think about this as you're working and rendering. What are the shapes that are in my ship here? We can all, you've all had basic drawing, which means you should have the ability to render a cube, a sphere, and other basic shapes. Does my ship look complicated here? Alexander's all, yeah. Okay, it's not. Let's talk about what my ship really is. It's just some line detail on there. So when we look at my ship right here, this is what my ship really is, guys. Make sure I'm on the right drawing here, the right level. There we go. Look at that shape right in there. I'm going to draw through it a little bit. Okay. See that? That is a sphere cut in half and then cut in quarter again. Just squashed. All right. When I look at this shape right here, what's this? It's a cube that's been pinched. See that? It's a square. So let's cut this shape in half in the front here. That is a squashed sphere, and that's half of it right there. Okay, so when I render, one of the key things that I do is I think about the shapes that I am seeing in here. That is a huge, huge importance to me. Don't be intimidated by the line or the detail. Some of that's just contour line. Think about what the shapes are here in front of you. That's a squashed cylinder right in here. Okay? Up here, I have a basic cube. In there, you see that? Cube shape. So if I take off my line now and I really look at it, that's all I have, basic shapes. Any of you guys could come in here and render some of these shapes right in here, okay? So as you start your approach on rendering, think of the shapes and talk to yourself and tell yourself, what is that shape? That is half of a 
sphere, squash, that's a rectangle, squash, center line, that's another rectangle. Think about these basic shapes. Don't overwhelm yourself with any of this. Okay, now I'm going to take that down. Let's come back up here. Let's bring our line back up. Okay, I'm going to lower my line down a little bit. Uh, about right there. Now I'm going to come on, I'm going to start putting some tone down. If you want to use some markers at first, that's just fine. You can use markers. Click the Copic markers, come over here, start with a base color, and you can come in and block in. The way that everyone has their own work preference, the way that I like to work is I take the airbrush tool, I pick like a medium grade like this, and I'm going to come over and pretty much put this medium grade under my whole entire line drawing because I start with a base that way. That's the benefit of working on tone paper is you already have a brown tone that's like a mid-grade so then you can add white and black to it but I wanted to do this example for some of you that have never you know worked on anything tone before I'm gonna come in here and just sort of start to block in a base shadow or I, excuse me I shouldn't say shadow I'm basing roughing in a base local value to my ship here this is about um, you know not pressing too hard on it. it's about a, somewhere between a 40 to a 50 percent grade on my vehicle here okay once I get this blocked in like this now I'm going to come back and I always do this when I work I'm just going to draw a little arrow so I remember the direction at which my light is coming in it's coming in at an angle like that so now I'm when I work on this I'm going to go back and I'm going to sort of remember to myself what these shapes were right here remember these basic shapes I just sketched a couple of minutes ago I come back and I ask myself hey what are those shapes right there in tone where are the highlights going to be on them? So if I come back to that and I start thinking, remember when we were doing that paint by number thing the other day, talking about numbers of highlights? If my light's coming down in this direction, I'm going to have a, um, let's go back to pen here. I'm going to have a one. That's weird. I'm drawing on this layer and nothing is happening. Why is it? Oh, that's why. I'm going to have like a one right in here. I'm going to have a 1 in here, okay? That light's coming in this direction. I might have a 1 back in here where these are de definite highlights, okay? Uh, I'm going to have a 1 up on the top of this surface because light's hitting right here. Light's going to be hitting right up here on the top. Those are going to be my big highlights. So where are my shadows going to be? I'm going to have a shadow back on this side right here. This is going to start to drop into some shadow because it's receding away. Less light can get to it. I'm going to have a shadow that's going to be right up along the back side here. Okay, um, and so if I were to come into this real quick and just take my airbrush here, let's imagine if I were to put some real quick base shadows, I'm going to have some shadows back in here. This is going to be a little bit darker and sort of lighten up. I'm going to have some shadows back here on that side, on that. I'm going to have some shadows wrapping around the side of the vehicle right here, some back in here, some along the base right here. You see what I'm getting at now? I'm going to have some underneath there little bit of shadows back in here. I'm turning the shapes really quick. I'm doing this super fast just to, so you guys can get a good understanding of where the values are going to start to work from. All right, so now that I've done that to indicate breaking those down into simple shapes, let's come back here. Let me raise my line back up. Okay, one second here. I'm going to scale this down just a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm going to come back in here. Let's go to my tone. All right, so now that I had that, I have a blocked in rough. The first thing I like to do, the way Phil always works, is I come in, I start blocking and thinking about a couple of my darks and my shadows. So what I'm going to do right now is come over to my airbrush tool. I'm going to go in here to about a 70 or 80. And I'm going to see if I can come in here and just sort of lightly go across part of this tone and start building in some dark shadows to see where to start basically turning the shape and the form. Okay. That, I remember that shape is like a squash shape. So I'm going to come in here and start to turn this a little bit, darken the side of it, get a little bit lighter. Okay. I'm going to have some dark areas back here. That's a cylinder shape. It's going to fade off. All right. Come in here with my brush, pencil a little bit in here. Let's just sort of adjust some of these.
and I forget how much lighter it looks up on here than it is on my monitor, but that's okay. Just bear with me, guys, for a little bit here. Um, let's adjust this. Let's get some darker value up here on the side coming down. Back down in here. Okay. So now that I get that, I have a, just a real rough idea of what is happening in terms of shape and where some highlights and darks are. Okay. I'm basically just turned most of my key shapes right now. All right. Now what I do, once I get those values sort of locked in, I understand where the light's coming from. I'm going to have some highlights up here. I'm going to have some other highlights around here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and now I'm going to start to pencil in on some of my little details. So I basically, I like to save my highlights sort of for the end and little details. So when I look at my ship, I have lots of interior lines that are going to allow me to get in there and detail out a little bit. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick on the tone layer. So let me show you when I'm talking about these little details that I could darken. When I switch here, I'm going to go over here and I might rotate between a marker or I also like to use this wedge chip brush up here. If I click on this right here, okay, um, and if you come over here and drag, you see how it's like that nice, real thick black wedge, okay? I find that to be really convenient sometimes for some lines. However, though, sometimes I need to adjust the value and get it to be a little bit lighter. Um, like that, you know. So if I come in here, I could I could sort of address some of this detail that I have that's in here. And come over here, I'm gonna use my marker wedge. Now see that's too dark. That's gonna get that to pop, so I'm gonna undo that come back and I could come over here grab something about there I'm going to come over here and just start penciling in some little details that I have and go along the side here get these little areas to pop out a little bit I have a little triangle right here I'm going to darken that in okay I have some other information back there uh, I have this trim detail that's on the front here and I think I would like to have that darkened in All right. And I'm just going to keep going over part of the trim and the detail that I have on my ship. I have these little side fins here that are sort of covered, so I'm going to darken those guys in right there. I'm using the Copic. I really like these Copic markers in here. I find them really convenient, right? You know, when I'm in here, I'm going to darken anything that's covered. That's covered right there, so that little vent should be covered up. Okay, I'm going to come in here, darken this a little bit on the side. All right. Um, I need to make a decision on my glass, on my canopy. Pushing and pulling of values here. Do I want the glass to be lighter, or do I want the little ridges around the canopy to be lighter? Right now, they're about the same value. I just threw a dark on there for the general shape. But now I'm going to get in there and start rendering out some detail. So um, I think I might, I don't know which way to go on that. I don't know if I should, any suggestions? Glass lighter or the trim around it lighter? That's right. And that's sort of what I was thinking is that the glass should be a little bit lighter because it's going to have more reflections on it. So why don't I come in here and I'm going to darken up some of these. trim areas here. be careful because if I get too dark in here it's going to flatten part of my ship and it's starting to do that a little bit I got a little dark so I'm going to come back in here sort of did that on purpose so now I could lightly erase some of that and pull it back down just a teeny bit and I could go in and grab one of the lighter values and sort of just lightly blend it in there okay there's going to be a value change anyway when my lights hitting on the top here some of this is going to start to dissipate just a little bit here okay so I can also come back in 
you race a little bit off the top there. I really like the racer tool because it works so nice and slow. There, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna leave that like that for right now. Um, so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna try to stop talking for a couple minutes and just just render and do what I note things that I notice on my ship here that I wanna get to pop out. I'm going to put a little bit of a base shadow around. I have a circle there that needs a little shadow on it. A little circle guy in here too. looks so much lighter up on the monitor so I apologize for that I'll just try to finish this up so I don't want to over render this but I just want to put enough value in there to turn part of the shape so what I'm going to do now is just come back in here and um, I'm going to put another li uh, line layer above I should just say another layer above and that's going to have white on it so I'm going to now come in here with my brush and I'm going to come in here and see if I can put some little highlights going across so Starting with just a real base white here. I'm just going to experiment a little bit. Put a couple highlights. I'm going to come up here, look right on the front right here. Get a little highlight sort of going across right here. Just getting that surface to pop out. See what that's sort of doing there? If you can see it all right on the monitor. That surface is going to get hit right up in there. Um, I'm going to come up on the glass right here. Let's get some little highlights on the top right up in here. I'm going to have some reflective light sort of coming across the top right in here. I want to get a nice sort of beaded highlight right up in here. Get that going across part of the ship right there. Let's get the fins. I want to have a little highlight coming across. Get a nice little highlight in here and then just sort of fade it off a little bit. Break it up. Punch that up a little bit more right in there. drop back down to the tone. I want to push up a couple values around part of that window right there. I 
actually that was way what I was not I actually had the brush that's not what I wanted to do That's just that value can get really dark in there. I'm trying to use the airbrush tool here so it's a little bit lighter of a jump. It doesn't get too. So now I want to come in, that's sort of a, a base, some of you don't have to go further than that. I know it's a little bit lighter up there, you'll see on my demo it's a lot darker. But um, I have a couple highlights here, I might push something up here, I want to thin my line down, I need to get some, I just want to come in here and start to just put some little coarse shadows in a couple places, punch up a couple darks, I have a couple little, see all the lines in here, I haven't really addressed what's going to be what yet. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to fill in just a little bit of information there using my small marker tip here. Come over here. Let's go maybe a teeny bit smaller. So imagining that would be like all some type of rubber. A little symbol right there. Now I could jump back and I could come back in. I'm going to take part of my uh, the, the blur and the smudge tool right here. I have the smear and blur, and I'm going to take blur and come back over here and blend a couple little things in. Now I have my high, just to show you this, I have my highlight separate. So if I pull this down, see how I can adjust them? They're up separately, so I'm going to be smearing part of my tone in. Uh, and just adjusting some of this, trying to get a good blend. Man, I should have used this. This Cintiq is so much more sensitive than mine. I have the old one at home from 2000. What a night and day difference. Um, I'm just noticing how thick my line is on here and at home it's not nearly even this thickness. Okay, let's go back to erase. Now what I like to do at the end, if I, I want to spend too much time, I'm about 20 minutes into this, uh, I'm just going to come back here and erase some of the overspray that I have around parts of the ship here. Real quick, come back in here. Lower the line drawing down a little bit. See how the value's working a little? Okay. And that's it. It's just, that's a real, I don't like to spend more than 20 minutes on something and uh, just to get the shapes to turn and just to see, because remember, this is just one of my ideas. I want to go on to the next idea and the next one after that. I want to be able to knock out four, five, six, seven ships really quick in an hour, okay, 
what that's the pace you want to get to eventually or you can just come up with comps real quick but you don't want to just hand them in just blank and empty so it's nice to be able to come over throw some real bass tone on something and then you just sort of end it at that those of you that use Photoshop, yeah, of course, I would rather render in Photoshop. It's a little bit easier, but I don't want to jump into a giant rendering. I just want to have something that I could take right here and I could pass off, uh, hand it to a director and be like, here, here's one of my concepts. What do you think? And I have enough right there just using the airbrush tool, their marker tools in here, and I could just knock something out super quick, clean some of this up right here. And now I could shrink this down and then I could go over and start on comp number two and work on that one for a little bit. Oops. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this now, and I'm going to come back while you guys are working. I'm just going to pencil some more detail on there just to have fun. And then I'll show you the difference. But Because, you know, part of me, a little renderer at heart, wants to just keep messing with it. And let's erase. That's enough for just a quick comp. I'm actually starting to put too much time into it. I could just take that right there, scale it down, and then forward that into a couple other versions real quick. So what we did in this class with this assignment is we it gave you guys quite a bit of time on it. Imagine doing the same thing. You have to get your drawing skill up to that fast point where you'll be able to knock these out and just comp them out, rough them out, and you're just looking at maybe you know an hour worth of you know an hour worth of time to do a whole bunch of thumbnails and then come up with like one finished design and then you go to the next one and the next one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end right here and then I'll come back in a sec. Hi guys, I just spent another like five minutes. I just thought I'd show this on the back here. I just came in with another layer and just started putting in a couple highlights and some little more darks up here around the front and, and that's it. I don't want to over render. I even threw some some uh, values back in here that I haven't even really fixed, but I, I just don't want to get too caught up in what I'm doing, but this is sort of cool. I like just having this sort of the way it is right now. Um, and then I'm just going to erase a little bit of uh, clean some of the edges up around here, up on the top, a little bit on the side, and then that's it. I'll leave it alone and, and just sort of wrap it up there. So I just wanted to show a little bit more progression, just putting another five minutes into it. A couple things I did is I went in here and I darkened up some of the values here. And again, think about pushing and pulling your shape. So one of my goals is, is that I like to come in here and if I retract my line, does my ship value hold the shape together? Okay, and so right now it is still holding together pretty well. So if I just increase my line a little bit, you know, that's all I really need. I just need a little bit of line on there to hold it because the value is now holding it together. And that's a great little technique that you can do is if you drop your line down and minimize it, look what happens if I go back to my line being 100%. Oh, it's like overkill. You see that? The value is starting to come through right now. And when that value comes through, I don't need it to be that strong. I can keep my line down about there. And you see how that sketch is holding through? It's really starting to hold itself and take place. And I could still come back in here. And let this, I'll just do a couple minutes, just maybe a minute here. I'm just going to take my airbrush, and I could come in here and really punch up a couple more darks where some of my highlights are. So I have some highlights right in here. I can punch up just a little bit of a dark right in here like this. Anything, I call these my, my punch areas because wherever I get, you know, any areas of dark with white right next to it, it's going to really get the eye to pop right over there. Even right here, I have two highlights here. I'm going to just darken up this underneath here, right underneath, just a little bit like that, sort of blend it in. Come over here, I'm going to punch up just a little bit underneath here. That gets that front nose to sort of pop up. Um, I have, you know, I, I could still come in here 
let me just do it real quick. I'll color a couple of these lines, like I have that line plating detail in there. Let me see if I can just color, color a couple of these up just a little bit here. Get that to read like it's, you know, just a, a, discolor, uh, a discolored plate of some kind, you know, and maybe there's another one here. And I sort of want to just put a little bit of a base shadow. I'm going to throw a highlight up above this just a little bit here. Sort of go down here a little. Get some value coming up here. Let's go to that darker. And then I'm going to throw a highlight right in above that and try to get that area to pop right up there. Okay, so I got part of that taking place. Let me fade off here a little, like so. There we go, like that. Now I'm going to come in here uh, with my brush, just go right to white, and just come in here, lower the size of my brush. I'm just going to put a nice highlight right in here. Just come in here, it's a little bit smaller. I thought it was on my line for a minute. Just going to get right in here, tap it a couple times, see that? Now I'm getting a nice little highlight right in here, and come across some of that edge. Get a highlight to pop that edge out a little bit in there. Highlight right in here, and I'm just going to come across here and streak a nice line right across here like that. Sort of fade that in a little bit. Get another one right in here as well. A little bit bigger. So if you can see that, I'm just sort of turning some of the surfaces a little bit just by getting some of those little. highlights coming in there like that. Okay, it makes it look like it's sort of a sleek little surface. Let's go back over here. Dark the value. Okay, that's pretty good for right now. I'm just gonna stop right there and end it. I want to keep moodling with it. Even though I didn't get to address much back here, that's okay. Just sort of fade this up a little bit. Get that to just sort of come in. Like that. And what I'm going to do now is let's erase part of the edge. Okay. That's pretty good. And I'm just going to come over and smear a couple things in here. Let me smear a little bit of this. Let me drop this down just to show you the difference. That's just the new, some new dark values I added. Again, a little bit at a time. You just sort of work on it, build it up, work on it, build it up. Now look at the difference. That's where I was. So you can see adding quite a bit of little values, just some little highlights. Let me drop that down. Now it's all the tone is on one layer. So you can see I just took it off there. Come back in here. And now I'm just going to come in here and with that blend tool and just sort of See if I can blend just a little bit of this together right here, get this to fade off. Blend a little bit of that back in there. I don't want that too dark. Um, actually, I want to erase, oops, a little bit of that coming up on that top. I wanted to keep that little piece sort of white. So I'm going to erase a little bit of value off of there. Okay, and I think that's it. I'm just going to leave it alone right now, and boom, let's go over to the next one. Raise that over spray edge there. Okay, so I've thinned down my line drawing quite a bit now to get my value to sort of pop out. And I think that's good. That's good enough for a base, you know, real quick base pass render. What are we about? 25 minutes into this or so, and now we're done. Boom, let's go jump to the next one. All right.